Looking to buy an O drive, but not sure which one to get? Let's compare O drive Pro versus O drive S1 versus O drive Micro. If you're new here, make sure to check out the links in the video description and subscribe to learn more robotics and AI. So on the surface, these O drive look very similar. There are slight differences. One of the most obvious difference that we see here is the price. O drive Pro is at $229. O drive S1 is at $149. And the O drive Micro is at $89. So what exactly are the differences between these three models? So first off, O drive Pro, one thing to note is that when you buy this, they have the option to have the screw terminal or the solder pads. Right here in the picture, you're seeing the screw terminals already attached. Here for the O drive S1, you also have the option to choose screw terminals or solder pads. Here for the O drive Micro, by default, it's not going to have the solder pads attached, but they do provide it for you so you can solder it for yourself if you want to. And they also include encoder magnets if you want to use their onboard encoder. The, the other two that we just went over don't include magnets, so you're going to have to buy the magnets separately. So here is the electrical specification. So here we're comparing the three motors motor drivers and we can see the all of these only drive one axis the recommended max voltage here this is where we see the biggest difference o drive micro is only at 28 volts the pro and s1 is around 50 pro being 58 s1 50.5 the current you can see that the pro is much higher we're at 70 amps for nominal and peak of 120 S1 is at 40 amps, 80 amps, and then micro is at 3.5 and 7. So significantly much less for the micro. So if you're looking for high powered applications, you might want to consider the beefier, stronger ones like the Pro or S1. And here we see the continuous power. We have 4 kilowatts for the Pro, 2 kilowatts for the S1, and 100 watts for the micro. The maximum modulation depth we see here is 99 for the Pro and 78 for the other two. Now how about for the feedback? So we see right here O Drive Pro supports all of these type of feedbacks. The O Drive S1 supports everything except the last two, the differential SSI and the BISC C. And the O Drive Micro is the most limiting. It doesn't support the RS485 encoder, but everything else that the S1 supports. So for the most versatile feedback option, you'll probably want to go with the Pro. If you don't have any sort of limitations, then the S1 or Micro might be suitable for you. And here's the control interfaces. We see that the Pro and S1 will support all of the interfaces. Micro is only limited to the top three. We have the USB, CAN, and CAN FD. For the features, what we have here is for the Pro, we have everything except the brake resistor support. This is something that the S1 offers, so that's something unique about S1. But one thing about S1, what you notice is that it's gonna lack the filtered encoder interface and the isolated CAN, which the Pro has. And also the fan output is another missing feature of the S1. For the micro, we see that we have multiple encoder feedback and the two other things that it supports is the O-Drive GUI support and the next-gen firmware support. So if you're looking for things like GPIO, you probably want to go with the Pro or S1. The micro does not have that. So just make sure you know your requirements for your system before getting the motor driver that you need. And here you can see these are the pinouts. This is for the Pro. So right off the bat, we see that the connectors here, these black ones, these are unique to the Pros, as we'll see later on. Some of these connectors here are going to be similar type of connectors that we'll see. But you can see that the GPIO pins is what makes this specific Pro board have a lot of more connections available. And these are the connectors that you'll need to make that happen. And here we see this is the S1. S1 has a little bit less connections. You can see that they bundled everything here in this big connector here at J11. And some of these connectors for the CAN and debug I.O. are similar to the other ones that we saw. Except you see right here the connector is going to be different, but 
uh, this one is going to be more similar to the micro as we'll see. So these are the connectors that you need to get. And here you can see this is for the O drive micro. These connectors are all JST and they just have different number of pins that you need. And these are the part numbers for the connectors. Okay, so now for the power panels, this one is for the Pro. One thing you'll notice is that we have A, DC minus, B, DC plus, and then C. Here, this is for the S1. We have the resistor, brake resistors right here, minus and plus. And then we have the A, DC minus, B, DC plus, and then C. Here we have the micro. The micro is a little bit different. We have the ABCs in the middle and the DC plus and DC minus on the outsides. And here's the three put together side by side for a comparison. So here's a table showing more detail of the different encoder and interfaces the Pro, S1, and Micro can support. So most of these on top, you can see the check mark means supported, E means experimental, S is coming soon, and X is not supported. So you can see here closer to the bottom, we have more E's here. So these are currently experimental. And then we see some X's here for some of the bottom two. Overall, the micro has more X's, so it's going to be more limiting in terms of your encoder options. But the Pro and S1 tend to have more options available, so you could use this checklist as a reference. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.